Once again, we welcome you to this program, Die Gleshe Ni Christo and the Bible. Friends, in today's episode, we'll be focusing on the true Lord God, the one who created all of us. So we hope you'll stay with us for the next half hour. Friends, this, of course, is very important in light of the fact that so many people, so many religious groups have very different ideas about who is the true Lord God that we should all worship, that we should all serve, and what His attributes are. But before we go on, we would like to remind everyone once again that the words recorded in the Holy Scriptures are going to provide the criteria that we will use as we examine this topic. So we hope that you'll continue to join us. We're able to avoid any confusion and any accusation that we are only giving our own opinion, personal views. Can we show a quote from the true Lord God Himself introducing Himself to His true servants? Well, as a matter of fact, we can not just show one, but show many, and these statements can be found in the Holy Scriptures, of course. Yes, but can we show something that the true Lord God said about Himself from the book of the Old Testament? For example, in the book of Genesis. Well, in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, we can show a passage wherein the Lord God introduces Himself. And we can read that, dear friends, again, in the book of Genesis, in chapter 17, the verse is 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. If you notice, the Lord God Himself is the one who was speaking in the verse that we just read. And he was addressing his servant Abraham. Now, what should we remember about Abraham? Well, Abraham received his call from the Lord God when he was still in his uh, native land of Ur, which many, where in many of the inhabitants were pagans, were polytheists, or people who believe in many gods. So when the Lord God introduced himself to Abraham, he declared, I am the Almighty God. So the true Lord God did not simply say that He is God. No. Rather, He showed His great difference. Friends, He differentiated Himself from the other so-called gods who were then recognized by the contemporaries of Abraham. The Lord God Himself said, I am the Almighty God. Now, did the Lord God change His statement when He introduced Himself to the descendants of Abraham? In fact, he did not. And again, we are still going to read from the book of Genesis. But this time, friends, let me read it to you from chapter 35. And the verses are 10 down to 11. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Again, friends, the true Lord God also introduced Himself to Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, in the same manner that He introduced Himself to Abraham, the grandfather. He proclaimed to His servant Jacob, I am God Almighty. But what does it mean that the true Lord God, where Edwell, is Almighty? Well, again, we turn to the Holy Scriptures, but this time, let's move on and read from the book of Psalms, dear friends. Here in chapter 89, let me read to you verse 6. For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord? Friends, when the true Lord God says that He is Almighty, well, one meaning of that is that no one is like Him in par. Or that no one can match His might, Brother Edwell. Yes. Now, I'm sure our friends are wondering, why does the true Lord God have no equal in power and might? Well, we again read from the book of Psalms, but this time let's turn to chapter 86, and the verse is 10, dear friends. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. What we just read is a declaration of faith from King David, a servant, an early servant of the Lord God. Now, we should take note that for King David, who was also a prophet, by the way, there is only one whom he recognizes as the true Lord God. And so King David proclaimed, You alone are God. Now, allow me to reiterate this to our friends and viewers where Edwell. 
Friends, the one true Lord God introduced himself to his true servants as Almighty, meaning there is none who can equal, much less surpass his might and power. And this should serve as food for thought for those who say that they already recognize the true Lord God. Remember, if the God that a person recognizes is not Almighty, if others can equal that God or even surpass Him in power and might, then that God is not the true Lord God who spoke to and was recognized by Abraham, Jacob, and King David. And according to the servants of the true Lord God from ancient times, like the psalmist of uh, the Old Testament, Beredel, who is the one true Lord God introduced by them? Well, once again, we read from the book of Psalms, but we go back to that previous chapter we were reading, chapter 89. But this time, let's read from verse 26. This is what the Bible has to say. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. If you notice what's clearly taught in the Bible concerning the true Lord God is not only how many we should recognize as the true Lord God, but also who exactly is the one true Lord God. And the only one true Lord God, according to what we read, is no other than the Father Almighty. But what if others argue and say something like this, Brother Edel? Well, that was true before. The belief that the Father alone is the true Lord God was true only for the ancient Israelites. That it no longer applies to the rest of humankind and according also to them, that we are not confined to recognizing the Father alone as the true Lord God. Your reaction to that? Well, we won't give our own opinion to that question. Uh, in fact, we're going to simply read from the Holy Scriptures, the book of Isaiah. Here in Isaiah chapter 45, the verses are 5 down to 6, dear friends. The Lord God Himself is the one speaking in these verses. I am the Lord. There is no other God. I will give you the strength you need, although you do not know me. I do this so that everyone from one end of the world to the other may know that I am the Lord and that there is no other God. We were asking, does the Father want only the ancient Israelites to recognize Him as the only one true Lord God? As a, a matter of fact, no. He declared so that everyone from one end of the world to the other may know that I am the Lord, and not just that, that there is no other God. And clearly, Brother Edel, based on what you just read, the true Lord God wants all men, all people, to recognize Him as the only true Lord God. That's correct. And that brings us to a sad conclusion. Why is that? Because those who say that they believe in the Lord God, but do not know who the true God is, are sadly no different from those who do not believe in the Lord God at all. Now, what else did the Lord God say about Himself, a test about Himself, that proves that He is the only true Lord God whom all people should acknowledge and recognize, Brother Edel? Well, again, we're reading from the book of Isaiah. But this time, friends, let's answer that by reading from chapter 46. Let me read to you verses 5 as well as 9. To whom will you liken me? and make me equal, and compare me, that we should be alike. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Friends, the Lord God Himself proves that He is the only one true Lord God, whom, of course, all men, all of us, should recognize. In fact, the Lord God Himself proclaimed, I am God, and there is no other, there is none like me. I believe we have to repeat this to our friends and viewers, Brother Edel. Friends, based on the Lord God's testimony about Himself, if a certain God whom one recognizes as such is like another, then for sure that so-called God is not the true Lord God introduced by the Holy Scriptures. But what if others argue and further insist, Brother Edel, that, well, the belief that 
the Father alone is the true Lord God is indeed true during ancient times simply because it was not yet the Christian era. Well, in effect, such people, if we are to examine that argument, such people are actually saying that the truth that the Father alone is the true Lord God, that was true only for a very particular time in the past. And we're sure that that is not the case. Yes, Sir Edel. That is why we need to find out in the Holy Scriptures, dear friends, is the truth that the Father alone is the true Lord God valid for all times? We will find out the answer when we return. So please stay with us. Because of Him, I am here. Because of Him, I'm never alone. Because of Him, I have love. For Him I will live and I will praise. Once again, you're watching the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. Friends, we were asking a while back, is the truth that the Father alone is the true Lord God valid only for a particular period of time in the past? Or is that truth valid for all times? Well, again, to answer that question, we won't give our own opinion. We'll simply read what the Lord God Himself said. Here in the book of Isaiah, dear friends, chapter 43, the verse is 10. Please read along with us. People of Israel, you are my witnesses. I chose you to be my servant so that you would know me and believe in me and understand that I am the only God. Besides me, there is no other God. There never was and never will be. Friends, for all times and in all places, there is only one true Lord God. And that is not our own statement that's in fact the statement of the Lord God Himself. And as the Father Himself attested, Brother Edwell and their friends, there is no other God there never was and never will be. This merely means that even during our time, the Christian era, the truth remains that the Father is the only true Lord God. Now, could the true Lord God for all time be anyone other than the Father Almighty, Bar Edel? Well, again, that's a very good question, and we won't answer it with our own opinion. We'll simply read what's recorded in the Holy Scriptures. And we return to the book of Isaiah, dear friends. Here in chapter 64, let me read to you verses 4 and 8. No one has ever seen or heard of a God like you, who does such deeds for those who put their hope in Him. But you are our Father, Lord. We are like clay, and you are like the potter. You created us. According to the prophet Isaiah, the only one true Lord God for all times is no other than the Father. Let us take note that he did not speak of the Son as the only true Lord God for all times, but the Father alone. And because the Father alone is the true Lord God, where Edel, for these reasons, what does he strictly forbid his true servants? Well, again, we turn to his words, but this time, friends, we'll read it from the book of Deuteronomy. Let me read to you chapter 5, and the verse is 7. These are the words of the Father, the Lord God. Worship no God but me. Friends, again, from the very beginning of time, the true servants of the Lord God were monotheists. Or in other words, they believed in only one true Lord God. In fact, the Father Himself commanded His early servants to recognize and worship no other God except Him. 
except the Almighty Lord God, our Father in heaven. Now, as the Christian era unfolded, brethren, let us go to the Christian era. Whom did the Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest messenger of all time, introduce as the only true Lord God? Well, these are the words, of course, of the Savior. It's recorded in the book of John, and they are very clear, actually. Here in John chapter 17, the verses are 1 and 3. These are the words, the testimony of our Savior. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son also may glorify you. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. We, of course, would like to call the attention of all our friends, our viewers. Please take note that the one who was speaking in the verses we just read is no other than our Lord Jesus Christ, who himself has been mistaken by many to be the true Lord God. However, based on what the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ himself stated, it's very clear. He does not recognize himself as the true Lord God. And we hope that our friends and viewers also noticed what you just read, Bar Edel, that when the Lord Jesus Christ called on the name of the Father, the true Lord God, He even raised His eyes to heaven yes. and spoke these words that they may know you, He was referring to the Father, that they may know you, the only true God. So dear friends, as far as the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned, well, there remains only one true Lord God, the Father Almighty, the Father only. Again, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, Edo, let us further discuss this. What is the true nature? What is the true state of being of the true Lord God, which all the more proves that the true Lord God is different from the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, again, we're going to read from the book of John. Here in chapter 4, the verse is 24. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's listen. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Friends, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself testifies that the Lord God is spirit in His state of being. And He also showed the great difference between a spirit and a human being, which proves, of course, that He, the Lord Jesus Christ, cannot possibly be the true Lord God. And how did he do that? Well, let's read his words recorded here in the book of Luke this time, chapter 24, and the verse is 39. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Friends, the true Lord God does not have flesh and bones, like a human being does. Because after all, he is spirit in his state of being. So think about this. When a person believes in a God that has flesh and bones, well, that is certainly not the true Lord God. That so-called God who has flesh and bones is not the true Lord God introduced in the Bible, in the Holy Scriptures. Because according to the Holy Scriptures, Bradle, the true Lord God is spirit in his yes. nature or state of being meaning according also to what you just read the true lord god has no flesh and bones a spirit has no flesh and bones and since the lord god is invisible for edel because he is a spirit again he is spirit in his nature or state of being how then can we be sure how then can we be certain that the true lord god really exists well, that's a very good question, and I'm sure our many friends, our many viewers are also asking the same thing. And friends, the Apostle Paul testified here in the book of Romans, chapter 1, the verses are 19 to 20. And this is part of the proof that there is a true Lord God. He is the Father. He is Spirit, but He is also Almighty. God punishes them because what can be known about God is plain to them. For God Himself made it plain. Ever since God created the world, His invisible qualities, both His eternal power and His divine nature, have been clearly seen. They are perceived in the things that God has made. So those people have no excuse at all. Friends, 
the Father who is invisible because He is a spirit in His nature, in His state of being. He is seen, He is perceived through the things that He has created. Therefore, the things that the Father, the true Lord God created, reveal His eternal power as well as His boundless might. And this is what proves that the true Lord God, who is almighty, really exists. Now, what are some of the things that the true Lord God created which are a testament, a strong proof to His unsurpassable power and might, Brother Edel? Well, in the book of Psalms, we can read of examples of what were created by the Lord God. Friends, let's read Psalms. The chapter is 19. The verses are 1 down to 4. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them He has set a tabernacle for the sun. Friends, the true Lord God is the creator of all things. He is not a created being. Hence, when the God that one recognizes is a created being, then that so-called God, well, that is not the true God at all. Definitely, Brother Edel. Now let's turn to the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. What do the apostles want us to understand concerning the things created by the Lord God from which humankind benefit, Brother Edel? Well, friends, let's answer that question by reading from the book of Acts here in chapter 14. Let me read to you verses 15 and 17. Why are you doing this? We ourselves are only human beings like you. We are here to announce the good news, to turn you away from these worthless things to the living God, who made heaven, earth, sea, and all that is in them. But He has always given evidence of His existence by the good things He does. He gives you rain from heaven and crops at the right times. He gives you food and fills your hearts with happiness. Friends, through the many good things that the Father always does for mankind's welfare. For example, He gives us rain from heaven and crops at the right times. He gives man food. He fills his heart with happiness. All these things are sufficient evidence that the true Lord God truly, really does exist. And of course, it is for this reason that man, who is the recipient of all these graces and blessings, commits a grave sin when he does not acknowledge the Father, the true Lord God. When he refuses to acknowledge that the Father alone is the true Lord God. But the important question that I'm sure where Edel, our friends are asking, how then can we arrive at the true knowledge about the true Lord God? Well, the answer to that question can be gleaned from these words recorded in the book of Malachi in chapter 2. The verses, friends, are verses 7 as well as 10. It is the duty of priests to teach the true knowledge of God. People should go to them to learn my will because they are the messengers of the Lord Almighty. Don't we all have the same Father? Didn't the same God create us all? Then why do we break our promises to one another? And why do we despise the covenant that God made with our ancestors? Friends, in order to arrive at the true knowledge about the true Lord God, well, man needs to go to or to seek out the true messengers of the Lord God. On the other hand, when a man listens to one who is not a messenger of the Lord God, then that person will not arrive at the true knowledge about the Creator, about the true Lord God who created all of us. And the true knowledge about the true Lord God, which His genuine messengers have taught, is that the only true Lord God is the Father who created all of us. But why is it so very important for God's chosen servants to remain unshakable in their conviction, in their faith, concerning the truth that there is only one true Lord God and that there is absolutely no one else besides Him. Well, it is because such a conviction will result in our salvation on the day of judgment. And friends, that is not our own opinion. Let us read the testimony of the Lord God Himself concerning this. Here in the book of Isaiah in chapter 45 
And the verse is 22. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. It is of utmost importance for those who are among God's chosen people, chosen servants, to remain unshakable in their faith that there is only one true Lord God and that there is absolutely no one else besides Him. Why is that? Because it is the Lord God Himself who declared, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. Friends, this is what the Bible teaches. So we hope you'll continue in your search for the true church of Christ, the church that upholds the genuine teachings written in the Bible, and is assured of the grace of salvation. We also hope that you will not allow the demands of your work, or study, or family, and friends to prevent you from joining the true church, the true church introduced by the Bible. The true church redeemed with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The decision is now up to you. We hope, dear friends, you will join us in a short prayer. Our almighty Lord God in heaven, once again, please accept our praise as well as our thanksgiving. Yes, Father. For allowing us to know more about you, Father. Yes, Father. For allowing us to learn your will, your commandments, and your words recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Yes, Father. But most of all, for allowing us to come to the true knowledge that you, Father, alone are the true Lord God. Amen. We thank you, Father, not only for giving us life and strength, Yes, Father. Not only for continuing to provide us with all the good things we need to live in this world. Yes, Father. We also thank you, Father, for giving us the chance to partake of eternal life itself. First of all, by coming to the true knowledge of who you are. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, please also accept our praise and thanksgiving. Yes, Lord. Because you also introduced the Father to us. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we beg you most humbly. Please grant each one of us faith Please, so Lord. that we may submit ourselves, we may humble ourselves before our Father. Yes, Father. We may serve Him as the true Lord God. Amen. Father, we ask all these in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.